Good evening. Um, good evening. It's 1905 in London. I'm Dave King, and these are the Together Talks. You'll have instantly noticed that the glamorous one in the Together Talks team is not with us tonight. Nikki Scott was last heard on a scratchy phone line from the Outer Hebrides, muttering something about leaves on the line, and she's down to her last bag of pork scratching. So I'm afraid you've got just me tonight. Please do not adjust your sets. So this evening, Together Talks is delighted to welcome Lauren Lefebvre, who is a Rotarian or, um, based in Dover. Lauren is the founder of the Breck Foundation, which was set up in response to the murder of her 14-year-old son, Breck, six years ago. Breck and, Breck and his friends were groomed by a man who ran, an, who ran an internet gaming server. They were told an elaborate web of lies to gain their trust. Despite many attempts to stop her son from contacting the predator, and to alert him to the fact that he was being groomed, Lauren was unable to prevent her son's murder in February 2014. This is a story of Breck Bednar and a video which was produced by police called Breck's Last Game. I should warn you that some viewers might find some of the content disturbing. I'm hoping we get some video. Okay, no video there. So um, we'll, we'll plow on quickly. Um, so as you saw, um, the video, Breck's Last Game, was a collaboration between police forces in Leicestershire, Northamptonshire, Surrey and Essex, designed to make young people think about who they're in contact with online and asking the key question, do you know who your online friends really are? That video was released last year, and the Breck Foundation now delivers powerful presentations using Breck's story as an example. And in the past 12 months, the charity has reached more than 20,000 students, 4,000 parents, and 7,000 safeguarding professionals. So hopefully, online somewhere in Surrey, we should find Lauren Lefebvre. Good evening. Lauren, Hello. are you there? Hello. Past 12 months, the charity has reached more than... Can you hear me okay, Lauren? Yes, I can. Good, thank you. It's lovely to hear from you. And um, I'm sorry we couldn't play Breck's last game, but we can move on from, from that uh, in a second. Um, so we're delighted to have you with us this evening. Um, the theme is recognising the signs of grooming and exploitation. Perhaps we could begin by asking you to take the Together Talk soapbox and discuss some of the themes that you might want to talk about this evening? Oh, uh, thanks, Dave. Um, well, the reason I set up the charity was because I wanted something good to come out of what had happened to Breck and our family. Breck was an everyday schoolboy, loved, um, you know, gaming, computing, did well in school, loved science, wanted to be a pilot. He had joined Air Cadets so he could fly someday. Um, what we just never recognized was that anyone could be groomed. Breck did not seem like he had vulnerabilities yet everyone does have vulnerabilities, especially online. So throughout the process of Brett being groomed, which was over a, the course of about of a year, I was aware of it. I uh, contacted teachers, I contacted other parents, I contacted the police, and I made a report saying, I think that Breck is being groomed. I didn't know if he was being groomed by someone who wanted uh, to have some sort of sexual interaction with them or maybe radicalization or something other harmful, you know, um, maybe something to do with gangs, but I could see that the signs were there, but nobody else would recognize the signs because Brett was still performing at school. He was still being himself, but I could see that he was isolate, uh, isolating. I could see that he was changing. So throughout the course, there were several people that could have helped if only they had been more aware of grooming. So the Breck Foundation was set up so that people were first of all aware of the signs of grooming, uh, being isolated, manipulated, and controlled. Uh, the child will receive gifts. The child may pull away from family and friends, sometimes miss school. Um, and uh, you can see changes in the personality. So it's the first step. And we also then went into education. We educate, uh, as Dave said, you know, uh, we do training sessions, we do schools, we, we train police. We work with anyone who has any 
interaction with children, which is a lot of us in different ways. And uh, we've sort of moved forward. Now we try to empower young people to actually make safer choices for themselves. So we have Breck ambassadors that do peer on peer learning uh, in schools and, and teach in an age appropriate way so that we can actually get young people to believe that these predators exist. Um, the statistics last year were that there were over 19,000 children um, groomed uh, and sexually exploited uh, just in England. And uh, at times, police have thought that there were up to 100,000 predators within the UK alone. And each of those predators will be grooming, you know, dozens or you know hundreds of children until they find one that makes a mistake. So this is not something that we just teach our child for themselves. What we've moved forward is to empower them to look after each other because sometimes the child being groomed will not notice it themselves. So it's so important that um, their peers, their friends, their family see those signs, act upon them and don't turn a blind eye. It is a, a, an incredibly powerful story, Lauren. And I really like to play that video. And so let's give it a second try. So I want to show you Breck's last game. And this is basically the story of, of Breck and really what happened on the journey that Lauren found herself over a, a, a traumatic 18 month period. This is Breck's last game. Essex Police Emergency. Okay. Uh, hello. Um, I need police and a forensic team to my address, please. What do you mean? What's happened? My friend and I got into an altercation and I'm the only one who came out alive. Are you telling me you've killed somebody? I first met Lewis online. He's my friend. Lewis is my friend. Lewis is my friend. Lewis is a mate. Lewis is my friend. Lewis is Bragg's friend. He runs the fastest FPS server I've ever seen. The guys and I play Battlefield with him every day. He's an awesome programmer. He's an awesome programmer. He is an awesome programmer. He's an awesome programmer. He's a good programmer. Lewis lives in New York and has his own apartment. Lewis says he works for the government. Lewis works for the Lewis government. Lewis works for the government. Lewis works for the government. Lewis works for the government. Lewis runs his own business. He says I should quit school and start my own company. He says I've got the right sort of mind. Lewis is a millionaire. Lewis is a millionaire. Lewis is a millionaire. Lewis is a millionaire. Lewis is a liar. Lewis says my friends are talking about me behind my back. He says that someone with a brain like mine is wasted on people like them. I'm going to be a programmer like Lewis. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is a liar. Lewis is OK. Mum and Dad say they're going to take my computer away. They say Lewis is dangerous. He's been friends for over a year now. Lewis says they can't do that. Lewis says they're trying to control me. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is a liar. Lewis is controlling my son. Lewis says he's ill and needs to hand over his company to me, but we need to meet. He says I'll pay for the taxi. Lewis says I'm really gifted and he trusts me. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is a liar. Lewis is my friend. Are you telling me you've killed somebody? Yes, I am. On the 17th of February, 2014, Lewis Staines, an online friend who Breck believed was a real friend, lured him to his flat where he was brutally murdered. We tried to convince him that he was in danger. If only Breck had believed us, my beautiful boy would still be alive today.
apologies, some technical problems, but uh, nonetheless, a very chilling video. Lauren, how does it make you feel when you see that? Um, to be honest, no matter how many times I see that thing, uh, it is upsetting. Um, just to think that a boy who had so much to give and so much potential, who wouldn't have hurt anyone, you know, would be taken in by this false, you know, relationship catfished. Um, the predator did catfish, pretend like he said was someone he wasn't. And it's just, you never, you, I don't think I'll ever get over, get over it. But um, luckily I have some good support and I do my best. <laughs> Let's talk about the Breck Foundation. And we were talking about some of the work that the Breck Foundation is doing. Uh, and it, it's, it's doing it in a number of different ways and some quite creative artistic ways. Do you want to talk about some of the stuff that you've been doing in schools? Well, I think the best thing and sort of our, um, you know, USP, our unique selling point is, is that it is a real life story. So we're not just giving a list of rules. Breck and his friends all had e-safety lessons at school like all children do. But the lessons weren't engaging. They didn't talk about grooming. They didn't talk about what they would do if they saw it within our, their friendship groups. They were still getting sort of messages of, you know, just uh, don't give out your private information, which is great for younger kids. But by teenagers, they are sharing more information. So we need to make sure that we're using lessons in an age appropriate way. So Breck story makes it more real for people. We have our Breck ambassadors that I mentioned and when they deliver, it's like another teenager talking to a teenager. So they know the lingo, they can you know, explain things in a way that they all can, can uh, you know, it resonates, it resonates with them and with their friendship groups. Um, we actually have a play now called Game Over written by a playwright, Mark Wheeler. I thought I would hate the play. I mean, who likes that's about the worst thing that happened in your life. I cannot believe how good it was. Um, it, it was lottery funded and now it's available for schools to perform so that the, the pupils themselves will put themselves out on the line uh, pretending to be me and Breck and, and play acting all of this and discussing the issues. There's lesson plans to go with all of that. And that is really something we're quite, quite proud of because once again, it's getting the young people to interact in a way that isn't just boring old rules coming from some boring old grown-up. The other thing that we have coming up in the autumn is especially exciting because we're getting new resources, books, and, and also a play written for SEND pupils, special needs pupils and primary pupils. Because even though, uh, you know, with Breck's last game, it's, it's only appropriate for teenagers, young children younger and younger are being uh, interacted with online by predators because we're putting as parents we're putting devices in their hands younger and younger so we need to teach them the safety lessons as well so our new resources will help the the send pupils who are even more vulnerable and one of the things we teach is you know everyone is vulnerable but you know we all have different vulnerabilities and predators will find that and and find uh, a shared interest and build relationships so we try to teach about what a healthy relationship looks like and whether it's online or off so that young people can recognize when something doesn't feel quite right. Sure. Two questions. Well, one question from two people. So Vicky O'Farrell and Thomas Prothero are both, asked, are both asking how widespread, how widespread is the problem? Do you know this, the figures currently? Uh, well, the, the thing is, is there are a lot of parents who don't recognize how widespread this problem is. Um, uh, specifically during lockdown, NSPCC and other charities have all done research and, re and found out and police have reported that uh, this, the cases of grooming are up immensely because children are spending more time on devices at home. Parents are trying to homeschool but busy trying to do the work that they need to do. And predators are literally writing handbooks uh, about how to groom children during lockdown. They said it's more difficult to do it face to face. So they're moving even more into online. And it's all done through shared relationships, finding a child who feels a bit lonely, who feels a bit isolated. And if you think about this period, how many of us have felt a bit more lonely and isolated? I have to say, I really missed my Monday lunchtime uh, rotary meetings. I actually blocked out for work, work from home most Mondays if I could do that just so I could have my little, you know, lunch where I just had fun with, with the guys there. And I felt isolated, you know, and, and yes, we can meet on Zoom, but predators are using this 
to build relationships with children who need a mentor, who maybe need to get some compliments, maybe need to, you know, to, to get something exciting going on and predators are using this time. So the numbers are on the rise and it's not gonna go away, unfortunately, because children are going on devices more often and they're going on younger and younger. You know, we have to continue to work on this issue. There's thousands and thousands of children uh, that will be abused, whether it's for sexual exploitation, radicalization, gang activity. And to be honest, you know, the gang activity has been on the rise because it's so easy to just start those relationships through the shared interests and befriending and then turning it where you kind of owe them a favor. Will you do me a favor? And next thing they're asking the child to run an errand, which is drug related, meeting up, pretending they're jogging and exercising when really they're handing over drugs at the time. So I think we need to talk to our young people about this because there's so many different scenarios. Brex is one story but we could talk for days about children who have been groomed in different ways. So we have to recognize those signs. I have a figure of something like 100,000. There are 100,000 predators out there in this moment. Is that a fair, fair figure, Lauren? When we did our launch for Brex last game, the police uh, stated that figure in the opening saying that they thought there were up to 100,000 offenders within the UK at any time and going after several children. So. You know, that is, um, I think, scary enough, but I think a lot of parents don't think their child would fall for it. I never would have thought Breck would have fall for something like this. He was my most common sense child out of my four. <laughs> now my child was going to get mad at me for saying that, but he was full of common sense. My right hand man, my big boy who did all these helpful things around the house. Um, but he was taken in by the lies and it just shows the power. And if you look at adults, you know, this is not a problem for children. How many adults fall for romance fraud? I read about it all the time. It's so sad. People get their, you know, their life savings stolen by someone pretending to be in love with them. And they're, you know, and we, we, have, we see it all the time with older people as well. So, you know, the, there is no age or gender. I mean, of course, we're trying to protect children, but the lessons that we learn through Breck's story are recognizing what a healthy relationship is recognizing when someone is stepping over the line, asking us to do something that's inappropriate. Um, it's such a problem with children exchanging um, naked photos, you know, sexting. Uh, they think it's a bit of fun. They think it's a bit of flirting. Well, sometimes maybe that is what someone wants to do, but other times there are predators who specifically want to sell those uh, photos, who want to you know, get the child to do more, to, to force them that, that, you know, to, to give more sexually online unless if they don't, then they will blackmail them into showing to their parents or their school. So I think there's so many ways that predators can try to get into our children's heads. Just, you know, we think it through, we wouldn't let our children go to the park with strangers. We wouldn't say, yeah, go play with them at the park. And here online, we do allow our children to interact with strangers. Breck met the predator through friends from school. Some of them had been gaming with them for up to four years. Predators are subtle, they're gradual, and they'll build that relationship through shared interests. And none of those boys, even the ones that, that started to not like the predator so much, nobody thought he was that dangerous because they had had a laugh with them. They had been having fun. He had been mentoring them and teaching them to code and encrypt. Some of them thought he was a real friend. But the, the, the key question, and it's almost like the elephant in the room here, and this is a, a good question from Peter Davey, is, how do families recognize the signs of grooming? That is something beyond the normal challenges of communicating with a teenager. You must have thought of that question many times yourself. I saw the grooming straight away. Um, and a lot of times it's not so easy. First of all, I recognized Brett speaking to a voice that I didn't recognize. And when I questioned him about it, he, he um, this new friend, wouldn't show his photograph, wouldn't go on a live stream like this. Now, I still can't tell, you know, if you're all nice online or not by your face. I met Dave, I know he's nice, but I wanted to at least see who Breck was hanging out with just to get a visual of how they interacted together. This predator lied and said he couldn't because uh, he was doing undercover work. So, I mean, the first thing is the sort of secrets, keeping things hidden. Um, and I ended up, uh, I, I saw the changes in Breck's personality. I didn't know Breck was getting gifts, but yes, the predator was giving them free games. He was giving them hip, hints and tips and mentoring, but he also sent Breck a brand new smartphone worth 600 pounds. That's a sure sign 
new trainers, new, you know, money, anything that the child gets from somewhere else that you haven't provided, that's a sign. And when I did try to end the relationship, after I spoke to other parents, after I spoke to the police, I decided enough's enough. Breck has plenty other friends. He, you know, he doesn't need to speak to this person who I felt was misrepresenting himself. I forbade it and it then went underground. But this is one of the most dangerous things that anyone can do is to think by forbidding or taking away, it just makes the problem disappear. It didn't, it made it more dangerous. That was when Brett got the secret phone and that was when their relationship became um, more dangerous because I was then unaware of it. They communicated when I would, would be out of the house or not around. So I think, um, you know, our website, Breck Foundation has a, a lot on sort of signs of grooming and we also signpost you know, to all sorts of places from NSPCC to CEOP, uh, Child Exploitation and Online Protection Command, Think You Know, Internet Matters, Internet Watch Foundation. There are a, a plethora of resources that I didn't know about. When I went to the school, when I went to the police, nobody said these are great places to go. So I think if, if anyone's concerned or needs to learn more, just like we do with everything else, Google it. I, you know, when I Google grooming, I still get uh, dog grooming come up because we had a doggy who I got groomed. But dig deeper and there are plenty of resources because even if it isn't your child, we want our children to recognize it so they can look out for each other. And I think that's the most important concept is looking out for each other. I think the question also is whose responsibility is it, Lauren? Cheryl Gawley is asking, do you feel children should be educated about grooming in school? Or should it actually be the responsibility of parents? Where, where does that fall? It's a whole, it's a whole thing, everybody. We have, we have to first educate the parents because I sensed Breck was groomed, but I still couldn't get anyone to believe me. Um, Breck's teachers didn't recognize that he was being groomed at the time. Afterwards, they saw, gosh, he did sort of back away. He used to always raise his hand and answer questions. And one day he just turned off. Well, that was when he was being groomed. We need teachers to be to be uh, you know uh, trained in this area as well. They're so busy um, you know helping our students learn about you know the you know the curriculum and the core subjects. But for me, these life lessons that they will get through their PSHE classes or relationship and sexual health you know classes and courses and lessons, those are most important because if we can keep our children safe and healthy in their mind and and, and healthy and happy, they will excel in all of the other subjects. So for me, the most important subject is teaching young people life lessons. So it has to come from everywhere, from home, from school. And I, I have to say, it has to be a good lesson at school because some parents just won't be able to do this. Some of us try and still fail. Some of us have no idea. And so we do need really great lessons in school. Uh, but also we need government to make sure that things are as safe as they can be to force um, the corporate giants and the social media giants to put in as many measures as possible. And we know that they're capable because of their amazing tech skills and they do have measures in place, but we need to continue to push them to make it a safer platform. And we do this, you know, trying to work with the home office. We have made policy change with police. Um, but it, it's really a push together. It's uh, everybody has to work on this together and the children have to believe it themselves, which is so important to use real stories. And Jill Scott, actually, Lauren, addresses that point really neatly because she's saying what new regulatory, legal or risk management solutions would help to stop online grooming. So if you had a message for the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, what would it be? Well, I'm due to meet Priti. I, I know that everything's uh, really quite busy right now, but I have met three of the former home secretaries and I do feel it was quite helpful to, to use Rick's story so they can understand how children need to be better educated. So if I could meet up with Priti, I would definitely want to ensure that police forces are all trained in recognizing signs of grooming and tech trained. The problem with some of the police forces and being so busy um, they're not all trained as, and as technologically skilled as the predators are. I mean, Brex predators run circles around most of the police that I've talked to who don't have those, that skill set. And it's not, I'm not being critical, I'm being honest. We've had uh, issues since with trolls and with some really inappropriate content being sent to the triplets. Really hurtful, really harmful and, and threatening. And it's been a 16, it's been 18 months 
and the police still cannot figure out exactly how the predator did it, why, and it's still an ongoing investigation. So one of the things I would like to push the Home Office is to, to get more tech-skilled police within the force and, and give them the power uh, to, to actually make arrests and, and a quicker fashion and move on to you know, the other crimes. Um, there was also a problem where police had to go to the US because the tech giants, social media giants are based there. And we have changed that when Sandra Javid was the um, uh, Home Secretary. And now police are capable of uh, able to go to the social media companies within the UK without having to go all the way to the US and all through red tape trying to get that sorted. They can go direct here, which for me was a huge win. And I don't know that all police are accessing that new information. What about the manufacturers, Lauren? Games like Fortnite, do you think the manufacturers, do you think that the distributors, this is from Ray Bevan, by the way, who's saying, do you think they're doing enough to protect children? I think, once again, they are part of that whole picture. So a good question. I think that they should be helping more. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do is have, we have a tagline called Play Virtual, Live Real. And it's a reminder that while we're having a great time playing online and enjoying ourselves and learning uh, and interacting, that's great but live real, stay alive by keeping relationships separate. That when we meet online, that we remember that those are different relationships than the people we know face to face. And that everyone online is a stranger and not to say every stranger is dangerous, but saying that we can't tell who they really are behind a screen. I would love it if, you know, if the gaming companies would take on Breck's story and the play virtual live real concept to help all the other gamers. We're, we're not saying stop gaming. We're not saying, you know, uh, quit the habit that you love, the, the hobby that you love. But what we're saying is, is do it safely. Unfortunately, there are some of the giants who don't want to be associated with us because we had the uh, uh, death at the end of Breck's story. And I think that's really small minded because actually we are not blaming anyone. There are lots of people that could have done something differently, myself included, but we need to learn from it and we need to make adjustments and changes so that young people are kept safer online. It's not gonna take away their business. They're gonna still be trebillionaires, you know, but it, we need them to put more into safety because they are lining their pockets. And if you look at some of the tech giant leaders, do not allow their children technology. They don't allow their children to speak to children to other people online. Sometimes they don't even allow them devices and yet they are making money off of us allowing our children devices. So I think all of that, there's a lot to rethink uh, and everybody needs to do their part. Then the social media companies, the final part of the triangle, they've also got responsibility and Sunita Nightingale says, what are your thoughts about catfishing? and the vast amount of fake profiles on social media sites, what do you think we can do to safeguard ourselves against them? I mean, I think it is a huge problem because um, you know there are some people who catfish just maybe in a harmless way because they're just not too happy with themselves. But there are numerous people that are catfishing to, to build a fake relationships with our children. I think basically, we need to we need to get police and, and the justice system to actually get these people to understand that you do are going to do time. You're going to do more time. You're going to spend time behind bars if you uh, lie about who you are, if you are trying to interact with children when you are an adult pretending you're someone you're not. We see time and time again that predators go and spend a few months in prison, maybe a couple of years and come back out and continue to abuse children. This is not good enough. So I think we do need a rehaul of the system and we need to also teach, continue to teach young people about what catfishing is. It's not just a silly program on TV, it is a serious issue. And, you know, Brex Predator had catfished those boys, uh, you know, for years pretending to be someone that he wasn't and these were intelligent boys. It happens to adults and that's, you know, one of the things too is, you know, uh, adults are taken in by this. And if that happens, you know, of course, our children who haven't seen the evil in the world don't recognize that someone might be uh, pretending to be someone they're not. And this whole area, Lawrence, spreads beyond child grooming and exploitation. We can talk about radicalization, we can talk about racism, we can talk about county lines. So what you're talking about has implications ac across the board here in terms of the criminal justice system. 
I mean, it does, absolutely. I mean, when once you recognize the signs of grooming, you know, the manipulation, the control, the building, the relationship uh, through shared interest, isolating the child, getting them, a lot of times, getting them to go on different platforms that they didn't normally spend time on, so taking them away from their friendship groups, even within their, you know, their platforms online. It doesn't matter what the intended outcome is if we can stop it before it gets there. Because in truth, I thought first that Brack was being uh, sexually exploited. I then thought he was being radicalized um, because the predator was very anti-religious, anti-different uh, ethnicities, anti-government, anti-religious. And he was pulling Brack away from all of our sort of family values of, of um, you know, inclusion and, and valuing people and respecting people. And he was changing Brack's thinking. So no matter what that intended outcome is, any of those outcomes would have been bad. And in fact, when I reported to the police, I was leaning towards radicalization, thinking that he was going to get them to hurt other people because he was gearing them up to be, to have hate. Um, and I thought maybe he was gonna get them to do something illegal in that area or maybe hacking. This could have been worse for the public. You know, if, if the police, uh, and they didn't believe me, it could have been a terrorist incident that could have hurt more than Breck. So I think, once again, it goes back to looking after each other. The outcome isn't uh, what matters. What matters is to stop it before it gets the outcome. So I think people thought I was a bit crazy. Oh, she thinks that grooming for sex, so grooming for radicalization or grooming for hacking. It didn't matter what the grooming was for. We needed to stop it before it got to the, to the, to the bad bit. So I think um, really getting everyone to talk about grooming. I, I talk to people all the time who still don't think of it as something that can happen to boys because initially when we saw so much of it in the news uh, back when Breck was being groomed, it was all about um, the Rochdale, Rotherham, all the girls that were groomed by gangs. And that still happens. That has not stopped. Um, police say that still happens all over the country. But that's what people had in their mind of what grooming was. And Breck didn't fit the mold. So it's, it's just remembering that grooming can happen to anyone. Predators can be, you know, any age or gender. Nobody thought that Brex Predator was dangerous because he was a teenager like them. And I think that was a problem. They thought Brex mom is so paranoid. He's not some crazy, creepy old guy. He's a teenager like us. And that really hurt my story, uh, that my chances of helping convince them because they just thought I was paranoid. Thanks to everyone for the questions. I'm going to try and squeeze in a few more. Um, interesting ones here from Barbara Middleton and Gina Carpenter, who are both asking how can they access the materials and the play. That's from Barbara and Gina is particularly interested in the uh, special educational needs materials. I know you mentioned the autumn, how and when can they access these materials? Well, in terms of Game Over, which is available um, now, we're just getting a new publisher, I think, who are gonna really um, push it forward for us uh, because they're really, really passionate. It's available through Salamander, um, uh, but also contact us through Breck Foundation. And because what, what we'd love to do is have me or one of my colleagues come speak to the school before they um, perform the play, before they start rehearsing, because it makes it so much more real. I, I've built relationships with the actors and, and actresses. There's actually five girls that play Lauren because at one point in the, in the writing of the play, I said that I was in bits because I was. And so the writer took that as Lauren was, you know, in bits all over the place and it really comes together nicely. So um, we actually like to know when schools are performing the play because we can at least advertise on social media, we can um, possibly visit, we can possibly support and, and uh, be proud of the work. So you can contact us direct or Salamander is, is uh, the publisher. And as for the send materials, that will be through us as well. We're hoping for October, we don't know with the delays how that will all play out, but um, the the creator of the resources is a Sun teacher himself, and he is amazing, and his pupils have reacted well to it, and we are really proud. So um, breckfoundation.org is our site, and we're a little bit short-staffed because of everything that's going on, so if we ever don't answer, bear with us. We will get back to you. Uh, contact us. We need the, all the uh, sort of support we can get. We have something called a no tech for Breck day, which is when we ask schools or homes or businesses to have a day off technology, to get a bit of a cyber balance, to talk about the issues, to use the Breck story as a platform for discussion. Cause you can't just go up to a kid and go, let's talk about grooming. They're just gonna be like, 
oh my God, don't, you know, don't make me talk about something. You have to use real stories. And so the no tech for Breck Day is really helpful for that. And that information is on our website about that as well. Brilliant. I mean, thank you for that. Final question. Try and do this in 30 seconds then, Lauren. Um, this is from Joe Shannon, who said that she saw, she saw you at the Rotary Conference in Nottingham last year. She thought you were amazing, as we all did. How can people help your foundation? 30 seconds, off you go. Wow, I love that question. Uh, it was a great opportunity, and I love that whole thing. Uh, we have we could use help and assistance in so many different ways. People have been so generous, but whether people have services, whether people can make a donation, challenge events, when we can do that again. Who wants to run and raise money? That would be great. Uh, any Anything that you love doing and anything you're good at, uh, find a way to help us, because the more funds that we get, the more children we can reach because starting a business, starting a charity is not the easiest thing in the world. And together, you know, we can make a better internet. Fantastic. Lauren, brilliant. 30 seconds. That was spot on. Finally tonight, we leave you with the chance to give us some takeaways sponsored by McDonald's and KFC and any other uh, fast food outlets. Three takeaways <laughs> that you, <laughs> three takeaways that you might want to, um, to leave us with tonight from this evening's talk. Okay, so I think, you know, some of it I would have covered, but uh, just to go over, grooming can happen to anyone. We all have vulnerabilities and a predator will build that relationship through shared interests. They will be having a laugh at the beginning. The child will feel comfortable and comforted and looked after and mentored. And that's how it starts. It starts in a really fun, happy, engaging way. And then it turns. So everybody has a vulnerability. It means we're human, you know, and, and uh, so it can happen to anyone. Um, know those signs of grooming in all its forms. So we did chat about it a bit. Just look at our website, Google grooming, look at the signs of grooming because they are there, but sometimes they're subtle. Um, sometimes they won't all show up, but I can guarantee when a child is being groomed, some of those signs will be there and someone will see them. And we need people to know those signs so that they can be reported. Don't be afraid to report, know the signs, report. And the, the last sort of takeaway is, um, is our tagline, play virtual, live real, which I touched on. That's not just a rule for children because uh, some of us have online dated before. That's how I found my fiance. Uh, we need to remember everyone online is a stranger. So if we ever want to meet up, no matter what age we are, that we do it in a very public uh, place where we can walk away if we're not happy with the situ situation, if we're not happy with the person. So the play virtual live real is a concept that's on our wristbands that we have for children. And it's on all of our materials to remember to never meet up in a private place when we've only met online. So thanks. Lauren, I have one of your wristbands here. There you go. Great day. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for tonight. Really powerful stuff, compelling stuff and, and some major lessons to be learned. And, you know, I just wish you the best of luck in the world. The triplets are now off to university, so you've got home alone, which is fantastic. But thank you very much for being the guest tonight. And thank you to everyone for your questions. Thanks for that, You're great. Thank you very much. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is almost it. Um, let me whet your appetite for future Together Talks. Next Tuesday on July the 21st, we've got Mark Norbury, who is Chief Executive of UN Limited, which is a leading provider of support to social entrepreneurs across the UK. And the theme of his talk is an interesting one, the role of entrepreneurs in creating social justice. And in the following week, July the 28th, we've already had a lot of interest around this one. It's Captain Sir Tom Moore. And his daughter, Hannah Ingram Moore, will be here to discuss Captain Tom's amazing fundraising with more than 32 million pounds for NHS charities and the setting up of the Captain Tom Foundation. And we've got one more Together Talks after that. That's on Tuesday, August the 18th, when we meet Max Johnson and his family um, to talk about the organ donation. So still plenty to look forward to before we break up for the summer holidays. Thank you ever so much for joining me tonight. And I look forward to seeing you next week with Mark Norbury. Good night. <laughs>